series on true crime stories. If you don't care for ASMR, I have a podcast. I'll have a link in the description, not in the description box, but I'll have it on the comments down below. And you can follow the podcast that is not ASMR related. If you don't care for ASMR and true crime combined, this is the perfect time to exit out of this video. That it's what the channel is all about. And I am not trying to trick you into watching or listening to this video. Today we're going to talk about a case that was requested on my Patreon page. I want to say thank you to everyone there. And hopefully you already got your little something that I sent to you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all your support. And uh, it really, I mean, encourages me to continue to give a little bit more time uh, to uh, new cases and research more and you know it's it's just one of those things that it really helps out so I can find more time to do this for you guys so thank you so much for your support but uh, this case was requested on my patreon page and I am not sure if you are I'm not gonna say the name because I don't I don't want to I don't know if you want me to mention it or not, but I don't know if you lived in the area or if you had somebody that lived in the area that I'm going to talk about in this case. So whatever, you know, the case may be, this is something that was very close to the person that requested this video. So I'm going to try to give it, as always, the two sides of the coin. I'm going to give you as many details as I can so you can kind of see how things escalated and even though this is not the worst case scenario that could have been it's just one of those cases that we can all learn from and try to do better in the future so we can avoid this kind of situations that are not good for anybody it wasn't good for the family that was basically and I'm going to call it victim quote unquote to the other family and uh, you know the neighborhood itself it just wasn't a good thing to be around so now this case took place in a beautiful place this is Lake of the Pines which is an exclusive and safe community in Nevada County California if you haven't been to Nevada County you're missing out this is a beautiful place you can smell the pines is crisp and clean you are surrounded by nature and if you have lung problems like I do then um, it's really nice because you can do a lot of outdoor activities without having to think about pollution or things that really affect me so this is one of my favorite places there's a lot of camping in this area I'm not in Lake of the Pines but you know in Nevada County California and it's just beautiful. Now, Lake of the Pines is located in quote-unquote safe community that people called a little piece of paradise. This was an area where people would go to retire, you know, after all the years working, or this is an area where wealthy people lived. Now, it's beautiful. It has tennis courts. It has um, a lake every house would have their own private dock in the area they even have an 18 hole golf course I mean and that's just to name a few things or amenities that you would get if you moved in this area now Tom and Lisa they were a couple that lived in the area for about 12 years and they enjoy every single perk that they could get by living in this community they've been living what it seems like their own little piece of paradise. Now, around this time, they got a, a new neighbor. Well, actually, a couple that moved in next door. Their name, uh, their names are Bill and Mary Wiseman. I'm gonna say it like that, but I've heard different pronunciations of the last last name. And they are a very sweet. I don't know, perfect looking retired couple. They were coming from the Bay Area and they wanted to spend the rest of their days in this community that seemed perfect for them. Bill and Mary, I mean, Bill was a Navy guy. He was a veteran and um, he was the kind of guy that loved 
vacations and stuff like that. I think that would be the only way that you would enjoy living in a community with a homeowner association. I don't know if you have one of those, but uh, I truly hate those. Um, not because I don't care about my yard or, you know, the flowers and things. I like to keep my house very manicured in the outside and, of course, keep it nice inside as well. But um, this kind of communities, they just make sure that everyone is on top of their game and they pay fees so they can keep up their yards and, you know, mow the lawn, get rid of the snow, you know, that kind of thing. But um, I particularly don't like it, but it makes sense that Bill and Mary moved into this community because, you know, it's the easiest way to go if you're a retired couple. Now, Bill and Mary decided to get a little party going on for getting to know the neighbors. And, um, of course, they also invited the next door couple, which is Tom and Lisa. And Tom and Lisa were very chatty, outgoing, and kind of out there. But Bill and Mary were a little bit more quiet, a little bit more, I don't know if an you know, introvert would be the description, but they were completely the opposite of what Tom and Lisa were. However, they got along just fine. They started talking and they, you know, they kind of got along from the beginning. Now again, this was very important for Tom and Lisa because they've been living in the area for a long time and they understand the community more than Bill and Mary. This community, just so you know, they don't have any fences in their houses. They are very close by. And there was even uh, somebody that they interview that didn't even show his face because of this thing. But uh, he was telling that sometimes you would open your door in the next door uh, neighbor's house. It's about six inches from yours. I mean, they're very packed in a small area, which meant that you would have to have some kind of a good relationship with your neighbor because, you know, you just have to. You're too close to hate your next door neighbor. Now, I hate these communities. Um, again, they have rules for everything. How you paint your house, the colors of the flowers that you can put in your front yard. I mean, most of them, they have their own uh, people that they will come and plant your flowers and stuff like that. I mean, they have parking passes. You're basically being watched by your neighbors all the time because they don't have to really write you out. They are the homeowners association, so they will find whatever they can, uh, I mean, whatever, and take it to the homeowners association meeting once a month and fix it however they could or give you a little bit of a ticket or something for breaking the rules. Now, some of those rules had to do a lot with the noise. There were specific times that you can use your boat and that you can mow your lawn or work on your front yard. Basically, noise it was one of those things that was really um, an issue, mostly because, again, this was a very beautiful area by the lake and you could use your boat, but there was a certain time that you'd have to stop your engine because they wanted the peace and quiet of what they advertised this community to be like. Now, uh, some of the neighbors said that uh, you can almost hear, you know, the insects or whatever <laughs> in nature you can hear because everyone respected this rule. Now, one day, uh, Bill, who was an older guy, he decided to have a little barbecue with his family and, uh, you know, the houses are so close that you can most certainly hear your neighbors, uh, see your neighbors next door, and, you know. So, uh, while Bill was having this little barbecue, Tom decided that he was going to work with a leaf blower in his front yard. And uh, I have to say, my husband is addicted to these leaf blowers. I hate them. I, I just cannot put up with this noise and I feel like it's I like a vacuum you know pick it up don't 
just blow it all over. <laughs> My husband is the kind of guy that loves it, but we do understand that they are very, very loud. So if somebody's having a barbecue or if somebody, you know, is having a party or something, you know, you kind of understand that they don't want to hear your leaf blower. So you either do it very quickly or you just don't do it and wait until there's a better time where you can do it. Not everyone is that way, but I understand that noise can be something that you don't want allowed noise by you while you're trying to have a conversation in a barbecue. However, apparently Tom didn't, so I don't know the kind of look that Bill gave him, but eventually Tom stopped. Now this little thing started to go for a while, and by Christmas, Tom and Lisa decided to decorate for the season. Now, I have to agree that it was very extravagant and really over the top, but you know, Bill being new in the neighborhood, of course, even though maybe that wasn't something that he used to do when he lived in the Bay Area, he still decided to decorate his yard and kind of go with the neighborhood vibe. They bonded, they got presents for each other, and it seems like things were st finally starting to get a little bit more close and all, not only civil. were kind of being left behind. However, Christmas came and went and it was February, I think it was February 1st or, you know, around Valentine's Day, when Tom decided that he was going to decorate for Valentine's Day. It was again over the top and it was very extravagant. He, he you know, he even put some red lights. Bill, being an older guy and being a different stage in life, he just didn't like the red light reflections going into his house, so he decided to go to the Pain in the Butt Association. Well, not really, but that's how I call it, the Homeowners Association. And he told him about it. He told him that the red lights bothered him. So Tom got a letter saying that they got a complaint and that he had to fix that. This was built next door because he knew that he's been putting the same lights for over, tw over 12 years. You know, he's been decorating his house ho however he wanted and nobody complained about it. So he knew that it was built. When the spring came, other things were starting to bother Bill. For example, uh, in the backyard, I, I don't know who does this kind of thing, but whoever did it, it's not a very smart person in my opinion. That would bother me too, but uh, apparently there was a rock garden in the back, and it was, I don't know if it was a square or if it was a rectangle, but half of it was in Bill's yard and the other half was in Tom's. The one that was keeping up with it was Tom. Of course, he's been there for the longest, but... Uh, Bill didn't just understand why would anybody would build this rock garden in the middle of both yards. It's understandable that there were never going to be fences, but why would you do that? I mean, who was going to keep up with it? That bothered uh, uh, Bill a lot, and if I have to be honest, that would bother me too. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, you know, they, they like rape red flowers and I hate red flowers and I'm gonna put yellow okay you can deal with that but it would bother me that nobody thought about the idea okay this is the, the line between these two houses why would I put something right in the middle now you just have to understand that Bill wanted to move into a place with rules and clear stipulations so he could live it, in it and in a way that everyone would have to follow the rules in the community. He wanted to live in an area where everything was pleasant to watch and basically manicured and a structure to follow. So a lot of the things that were going on, this you know kind of thing would bother him a lot. The rock garden, the outrageous decoration, you know, and now the other problem, and again I'm trying to go through as many de details as I can so you can put yourself on both sides is that every time that Bill um, looked out his kitchen window, he could see the garbage.
garbage can.
this guy that came, the professional that came to divide the properties, um, he, he just vandalized his truck. I mean, he broke the windshield. He went crazy. Now, I couldn't find anything, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I couldn't find anything to say that he was processed for that. I don't know if they called the police or he, he decided to just pay for the damages after he realized that he did what he did was really dumb. But soon after, you know, this incident, um, Bell's car wouldn't start, so he called a tow truck to take it to the mechanic. And they called him back and they said, hey, you had water in your gas tank, that's why your car is not working. So Bill immediately assumed that, of course, this was Tom doing this to him, because remember what happened with the mediator's truck, I mean, he vandalized that. And um, you could see that Tom was also trying to annoy Bill however he could. Um, every time that Bill would have a party, he would bring the, the, the leaf blower and, you know, make it really loud so they couldn't enjoy each other's company. Um, one day, Bill was having this barbecue and Tom's dog ran after one of Bill's grandkids and scared him. It doesn't really say in the report that he bit the kid because it wasn't like a police thing. Like, this is just based on research. So I don't think he bit the kid, but scared him off. And, um, of course, Bill went and helped him and he was really mad at the time. So he went and yelled at Lisa, which is Tom's wife. And he tells them that something like, you know, but you better stay away from him and his family or that he was going to come and for them. So, if 
even though it was called the police, nobody got arrested up until this point. So Tom's decided, Tom decided to get cameras, but those cameras were, I mean, basically they were pointing into Bill's property. Remember, there's no fences. And uh, it almost seemed like they were keeping an eye on Bill and not so much on his own property, you know, Tom's property. So the next day, Bill decided to trim uh, a tree in his property, in his front yard, and Tom felt like the tree was his and that he didn't have the right to trim it. So he took a picture of Bill trimming the tree, and Bill got really mad at him because, you know, they kind of struggled over the camera and how ridiculous it was that he was taking a picture of him basically trimming a tree. But it got very physical, and Bill ended up punching Tom in the face. So Bill got arrested and charged with battery, and he was on probation after that. They also had a restraining order, both of them. After this, things kind of flipped, and um, all of a sudden, Tom, you know, could keep the dog and Bill needed to pay for the damages in the rock garden. Remember that it was agreed that he would have to move the rock, the dog, I'm sorry. And, and now all of a sudden, you know, Bill would have to pay for a rock garden that he destroyed on his side of the property. It seemed like everything was turning against Bill. He, I think he felt very humiliated. And uh, I also feel like he was a little bit sad about how things happened because now he, he had an impeccable record, he had an impeccable reputation, and now all of a sudden he, he had all these legal problems. At the same time, his grandson was diagnosed with cancer, and that kind of devastated him. It, it was like the cherry on top, you know, after everything that he was going through with the neighbors and legal drama, then he got this. So he decided to talk to his real estate agent and put the house for sale. The real estate guy says, well, this is not the best time market-wise to sell your house, but we can try. In the meantime, Bill decides to, you know, go on a trip with his wife to kind of clear their heads and leave things behind and try to come up with a fresh or renew mind. But when he comes back, he finds his yard damaged. I mean, it was ransacked. Everything got destroyed, including his plants. I mean, the planters, everything. And one of the things that broke his heart was when he saw that one of his grandson's toys got destroyed. And that was the one that was going through the cancer. Uh, and so... broke him even more to see that he just wanted to move into this place to enjoy a peaceful and quiet community to you know spend the rest of his days and then enjoy his family now his family was going through this sickness with his grandson and his next door neighbor was basically the devil <laughs> and was destroying everything for him so he He decided that he wanted to get rid of uh, Tom, but he didn't want to do it himself. So he went to his real estate agent, which, by the way, he was known by everyone in the area as a very shady guy and somebody who would have contacts in the Bay Area that would uh, find somebody to get rid of Tom. How desperate must this guy be? I mean, Bill be to resort to talk to a perfect stranger about getting rid of his next door neighbor. Well, the real estate agent apparently found a guy who can do it. So they they, they, they had a meeting with this guy that he found. And, you know, this guy asked him several times, are you sure you want to do this? And if you're sure, just 
just show me the money and we can go ahead and move on. Um, part of the agreement was that he was going to kill the guy away from the home, uh, from the home and not in the house or the neighborhood. It would have to be somewhere around his place of work, you know, Tom's place of work. feeling a little bit better about this situation, you know, that it was going to get resolved for him. But as soon as he steps out of the meeting with this guy, he gets arrested. Apparently the real estate guy called the police after Bill asked him to find somebody to, you know, get rid of Tom and find a hitman. And the hitman actually was the guy, was a officer pretending to be one be a hitman and uh, they filmed the whole thing so basically it was a confession that he did on camera in that room so he was charged with two counts of solicitation to commit to commit murder and he was convicted and sentenced to five years in prison now you have to uh, see this and I think in, the, in a positive way right because I mean, it didn't happen. The shady real estate agent wasn't as shady as everyone thought, and he did the right thing and contacted the authorities to get this taken care of. But just put things into perspective. I mean, this is the kind of situation that for me, it's a deal breaker, a condo or an area with a homeowners association because all of a sudden you have to, you know, live by their rules. If you would live in a different area, he could have put a fence, he could have done something about it, but apparently because of living in this community, everyone was quote-unquote forced to get along in order to live in, in a place that it was nice looking. Nobody likes to see fences in between the houses. You know, you want the landscape to flow in between the houses. You want to feel safe in this community. You want to get to know your neighbor. But then it's hard to do that when, you know, people are completely different. I have to say that um, I understand that part because, as I mentioned in another video, I mean, I'm not the kind of person that will have a friendship with a neighbor because I, I understand that a neighbor, it's a neighbor and not necessarily we have to have a relationship in order to be good neighbors. We just have to get along, try to do our best to look, make the neighborhood look nice and everyone should be responsible for what they own in their own piece of property. But uh, <laughs> I have next our neighbors that are completely different than we are. I mean, one of them likes to have parties and uh, drink, and we don't drink. So for me, it's easy to keep a distance from somebody that has a completely different um, way or lifestyle than mine. Because I couldn't be friends with somebody that has those lifestyle options because they're bad. No, because they're different. I am the kind of person that likes to have a fence in the backyard because I want my dogs to run freely and, you know, have their own space and not feel like I have to keep an eye on them 24-7. You know, they have their area. They, they can run. They can do their things. And so for me, it's easy to understand both sides. Tom's side, where he's like, it's not a big deal. And also, I can understand, you know, Bill's side, where he's like, well, this is my house. I paid for this much land, and that's how much I want to have for me. All that goes to say that we're all different, and we should respect each other's uh, beliefs, no matter what they are. 
just understand that we're not forced to be friends with everyone. We just have to be civil. We just have to be responsible. We just have to be respectful of each other. If you're going to build something, just make sure you know where the line stops of your property. You, it, no, you don't do that. You don't pay this amount of money for, let's say, a quarter of an acre and then want to have half of an acre. That, that doesn't happen. Does that mean that what Bill did was right? No, I'm just trying to say that all these things can be avoided if we try to be civil, if we try to be nice but keep our distance when we understand that we're different, when we understand that, you know, my lifestyle is different from your lifestyle, that doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong. That doesn't mean that uh, I'm wrong and you're right. It just means that as long as you live inside your property lines, you're entitled to do the things that you're entitled to do according to the law. Have your radio, your music up until 10 p.m. You know, don't run your mow mower uh, and uh, your lawn mower or your leaf blower or whatever it is at 6 a.m. in the morning. You know, that is the kind of thing that... Uh, It's just part of the rules, and it's part of common sense, and uh, it's just part of those things that we have to respect and understand in order to live in a peaceful place. Does that mean that everyone is going to be peaceful around you? Not really, but it means that if you keep your distance, understanding that we're all different, then maybe things won't escalate this bad. They tried to do the right thing. I'm not saying that they, they, they should have done something different or anything. I'm just saying that they tried, but they I feel like there wasn't an understanding that they were different and that they had to understand that they were different. There's always a better way to fix things that is not going to involve murder. And I, I, I will never get tired of saying this. There is always a way out. There is always something you can do that doesn't involve any kind of illegal activity. This was sadly a, a you know, it wasn't the worst case scenario, but it, this was a sad story that affected a lot of people. And I think that's why my friend on, friend on Patreon wanted to get this out there, you know, because this thing still happened. Thankfully, not everything escalated to this point, but it's uh, something that we all should keep in mind. We're all different. We just have to understand that and uh, stick to the rules of privacy because you know your freedom ends when somebody's when somebody else's rights begin you're free to do whatever you want within the lines and parameters and limits so we can all enjoy life in a different way because we're all different but still by staying under the same rules Thank you so much again for requesting this case. Let me know in the comments down below if you had any kind of problems like this, not, you know, that escalated to be this bad, but if you found a way to fix it, if you had any kind of experience like this and you would like to share how you fix your dilemma with your neighbor or with somebody close to you, or if you know a case, or if you know a 